back, Tin Talk Pod, season two, episode four. We'd like to welcome the one and only, the Pegasus Rebel, Mr. Taco Soup, the pride of Iowa, king of Dune, owner of Dillard Stock, Drake Relay's legend, USA Marathon champion, double bogey golfer, the most beloved project manager, Mr. Never Say Die, welcome to the podcast, Brogan Austin. How are you doing? Um, not very good. <laughs> uh, I'll, there's some clarifications there. Uh, it's as we're binding. Yeah, as we're binding quickly. It's par golf. Yeah, <laughs> I don't do my research when I make these. Uh, you think he wouldn't need his yeah. <laughs> more episodes? You're like, what does Brogan do again? Yeah. Uh, no more Dillard stock as well. So you you did sell off. The we we had to get rid of those. Yeah. The What's the most recent stock you've bought? Let's hear it. S and P five hundred. S and P. Let me tell you about the S and P five hundred. <laughs> Rich dad, poor dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you ever heard of it? Thank you again to our sponsors, Pillar Performance. I got some here uh, for those watching on YouTube. I love the berry triple magnesium professional recovery. Helps you recover fast from your runs. Helps you sleep better. I know Ollie Herrera, George Mills. Both 350 mi- sub 350 milers are ripping this stuff right now. Use code TINTALK for 50% off your next order. Highly recommend trying it. It's a game changer for me to get my sleep and to feel better the next day. They also have all sorts of different products like uh, their ultra immunity supplements that I take every day also to stay healthy. And I also take the joint armor to help my body and my tendons feeling good day in and day out. Go check out pillar uh performance online now use code tintalk 50 percent off support the pod support a great up-and-coming brand that is truly making a difference for our sport today thank you so much for this support uh joey can you take us through quickly what what you've been doing training give us a quick update isn't this the brogan podcast it is Where we but me? i just wanted to be sure people knew that you were here also i am also here that's correct uh i did a threshold and vo2 we got to stop moving that mic <laughs> we got to put it somewhere and leave it there <laughs> tell her how are we doing on sound good <laughs> we i did a uh threshold lactate threshold of vo2 max <laughs> test last friday and that absolutely drained me for about three days i was so tired after um, i did like nine miles on the treadmill of averaging probably like 5 30 pace the whole time it was gnarly but it was good very productive um me and antonio basically had the same numbers um follow me on strava if you want to learn those numbers uh i'm going to gatekeep that one for this pod <laughs> um and then uh two words about training this week double threshold that's it's all you need to, that's all you need to know wow well, so it was great yeah super easy i mean we're at, you hit for mileage last week uh mileage last week 76 i should hit 90 this week and most easy days, just like an hour. Yeah, hour for the easy days. Um, what was the double threshold workout? Can you break it down for me real quick? Yeah, it was literally two days ago. Um, it was eight by, it was my first double threshold of the season. So eight by K in the morning, um, like two, sorry, 317 down to 313 off of 200 jog in like 55 seconds. And then in the afternoon came back and ran uh, 12 by 400 averaging 76 77 off of 100 jog we'll say 30 seconds average for that jog so except you sorry i was gonna say is that would you say that's that threshold yeah it was all threshold yeah yeah true threshold true threshold 505 pace threshold for a 400 words that threshold. actually gets tossed around it's not it's not ed Ches threshold or tempo when he runs 430 no it's like true threshold based on the test that we did last week so what you're saying is people wouldn't have to go to your strava to figure that out <laughs> you failed the beans on that. I don't know. We're talking. We're talking K's here. That's hard. For, yeah, yeah. For I couldn't convert. <laughs> but when you give me four hundreds, I was yeah, like, okay, I think I can convert, right. convert that. Yeah, for four hundreds, it's like on the track. Five oh five is like LT one is what they call it. So that's just about the fastest like part of the threshold that I'll go, and the slower side will be closer to five twenty, five twenty fives. So the you know three seventeen to three thirteen K's kind of represent that. So yeah, that was my that was my week. Nice, bro. Can you give us a rundown of your past week and why didn't you do double threshold? What's going on? Uh, well, I'm old is the big thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, no no double threshold. I've done double threshold twice, 
uh, probably in the past two years. And each time I've been injured for six plus months after it. So definitely staying away from double threshold. Um, so with that, I do a little bit more volume uh, with my single session. Um, but this past week, uh, I actually got my first flare up in my foot, unfortunately. Uh, but was able to dial things back, uh, push workouts back a day and uh was able to work out today fortunately um and things are feeling pretty good uh but essentially uh we are on this two-week cycle and we just rinse and repeat workouts um the biggest one is uh, i guess what we did today is 10 by k just at threshold mm-hmm. uh, which is a very similar pace um and then uh, with a minute rest or uh two minute rest we usually do it on the track just because uh we can keep the effort dialed in a little bit better um when there's undulation then you're not really dialing into that effort and you're not hitting true threshold and uh i use use the analogy of you know if you're at a carnival um there's like those little water guns where you're trying to shoot a hole um and you have to be spot on you know if you're above the range or below the range uh your duck is not moving along uh so you have to hit that zone right dead on um and the track uh, allows us to do that quite a bit better so um we mix it up uh do k's at threshold and then um this saturday we'll do miles at threshold and then uh we'll hit a long run and we kind of rinse and repeat that on a weekly basis also throw in some vo2 work so those are like the two yeah uh key components for building the engine is like threshold work and vo2 work so uh really trying to dial those in so break it down really quick where it's like so let's say day one is a threshold day and then what do you do in the following three days uh day one threshold day so workout uh, like 10 by k what you just said yeah 10 by k uh day two uh take it really easy uh so usually right now it's just nine miles easy um and then day three is uh a little bit more volume and then some sharpening stuff so um, i always try to do speed work uh really helps with like efficiency uh so you you your economy uh is more efficient when you're you know knowing how to run proficiently as well so uh speed work really helps with that recruiting the muscles um another analogy i love analogies uh like if you were to put a cast on after you break your arm uh your muscle atrophies and the same thing uh happens when you're running and so if you aren't touching that system you're not getting like that synaptic you know firing for those respective muscles um so it's important to hit those muscles all the time same with threshold same with vo2 um and any of the other systems that you need so uh, always dialing those in so those three days basically rinse and repeat start workout and then kind of do the easier days yeah i definitely think that's something that is very common with any you know casual runner or even high school runner where it's something where it's really easy to just run consistently you know that easy nine mile day you know or six mile day or five mile day for whatever it is for someone where i think it is important to hit all that stuff and that for me is something that i'm trying to remind myself coming back from my achilles stuff right now where it's like i need to force myself to do jumps like you know we've talked about before where it's like if you can do box jumps you're probably staying healthy Mm and you can't do box jumps or something going wrong you know and same thing like with strides and all that stuff is like I'm forcing myself to do that so that was what I did for the first time where I was basically just running easy every single day this past week and I basically just finally like forced myself to break that cast and to start actually using those muscles again in the way that I really need them to and uh, yeah for sure that's great advice did you recently I know you have the CIM marathon coming up in three weeks yeah, yeah, a little about three and a half. Yeah, and you've been running roughly ninety miles a week. Give yeah, take. Yeah, it kind of uh, fluctuates because every now and then I have a window where I'm hitting like two long runs within a in a week. So it like one ten to like ninety is like the window of like where I'm staying healthy. So it fluctuates. Yeah, for sure. So this has been, I would say, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong. One of your most successful marathon buildups so far, in terms of feeling like you're actually ready to run the 26.2 distances like in the past what three years four plus years yeah. four sure. plus years yeah yeah and 
just take me through what it took to get back to that consistency and back to that training. I know you've dealt with so much stuff with, I know your foot with your planner, um, and you've been through the ringer with so many different injuries. And now you've finally been able to put the pieces back together of that puzzle that everyone's trying to put together in order to get and see that final prize. So talk to me about what it's took for you specifically to get back to that place of consistency and feeling like you're prepared going into this marathon. Yeah. Um, it's, it's always a moving target. So, uh, the pursuit of perfection in running is always evolving or changing. And for me, it's as soon as I think I have everything figured out, uh, I get a slap of reality. Um, and so it's always, uh, taking a step back and reassessing, you know, why something went the way it did and trying to do better the next time. Um, and even that is never enough. Uh, and, you know, through the iterations of, uh, building up, breaking myself, building up, breaking myself, I've always had to change something new and, uh, it's gotten me a little bit closer and eventually, you know, there's still something within the build that breaks me. Um, you know, for me, uh, diet is a big one. Uh, as you get older, it just, everything changes. Um, you're not as responsive, adaptive to training. Um, you can't hit workouts as hard as you used to. Like I used to be able to just rip everything and recover in two days. Uh, now I need to have that two day window of recovering. Um, <clears throat> I have to see a physical therapist on a weekly basis. Um, I There's always, I describe it as like a tube of toothpaste. You know, you may have some like pain and you could push it away and it goes to a different spot. And so uh, that constantly happens. So being able to adapt quickly uh, uh, with a PT is very important. And then uh, the last uh, big thing for me is lifting and, you know, also nutrition, uh, like now I'm eating like a hundred grams of protein, uh, just cause my tendons and muscles just aren't. In what cadence? Like hundred grams of protein every day, every day, every day. Yeah. Um, so just trying to nip every little component out. Um, and I know through my metrics that, you know, certain things inflame me more. So avoiding all those things. Uh, I know guys make fun of me. I eat taco bowls every day, but <laughs> that's like the one thing. That, <laughs> that's the one thing that like I can look at my my numbers and the next day, like I'm fully recovered. And then on the easy days, I may splurge a little bit more, but what are the metrics that you're using to see that what you're doing is actually working? Like you just said that you can, I can see my numbers. What are those numbers that you're looking for specifically to say, I am recovering, I am getting enough fuel? Yeah, so we've been using, well, I guess I've been using Whoop for probably four plus years now. And uh, there's heart rate variability, which is like a big leading indicator of like how recovered you are, um, resting heart rate. Um, and now at this point, like I have really dialed in my numbers and I know how to impact those numbers. And it does make a huge difference. Like even from like being able to think clearly to having energy uh, and, uh, just performing better in my running too. Like I can definitely tell like my rhythm of breathing and heart rate. Uh, some days you just feel off um, and it directly correlates to that recovery score. And so uh, now I can hit every workout like feeling good um, based on those numbers. And so I know the things I need to do to be ready on workout days. When I say Brogan Austin, USA marathon champion, what is the first thing that you think about when you have that title next to your name? Like that is something that no one can ever take away from you. It's a title that, you know, it'll be on your, it'll be a part of your eulogy as it was a title in my podcast yeah. today. Like what is the, what is the response to that? Like, like that runner and where you are now, like, what is that? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit of imposter syndrome, honestly. Uh, like back in the day, it was definitely like, puff my chest out like okay I'm somebody I'm going to compete I know I'm coming to the starting line and everyone's like oh crap like Brogan's going here like he's going to compete with me today um and now it's more so damn that was five years ago <laughs> and what have I done since then so uh 
knowing that I am that type of runner, I have the potential to be that runner. Um, even before I was that runner, you know, I'd had like four or five years of like poor training and just like entries and everything like that. So just having like a relentless belief that I am that runner, um, like that still exists in me today. And like, I know I want to go out and prove that I am 2018 U.S. Marathon National Champion and I am that caliber of runner. And I haven't done that in four plus years. You know, this would be a good year to do it. Yeah, this, this, is a good, this uh, would be a good this year. Is a good year. Pick the right year, you know, yeah. COVID and all that stuff. It's like, <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> Olympian, COVID Olympian, like kind of yeah. whatever. But this yeah. is the year to... For sure. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I definitely feel that. Like today was the first time I felt poppy in over five years. Like I haven't felt that way and forever. Granted, I'm in terrible shape still just because I've been injured for a long time. But like being that type of runner is like a really good place to be at because you're healthy. And if you can do all the things that you need to do, you can hit those targets and move up the fitness chain. And CIM, uh, not going out there to, you know, show my cards, it's, it's a business trip. Uh, I need to qualify for the trials, I haven't done that. And then hopefully continue to not have to take a lot of downtime after that marathon and just build straight into the Olympic trials where hopefully, you know, three months away from now, uh, I'm in that type of high caliber shape. I mean, just going off of, you know, you racing the world's greatest marathon, you know, California marathon in Sacramento. Mm, California yeah. International. Yeah. yeah California yeah. International. <laughs> a renowned, yeah, yeah, if you will. <laughs> a very renowned marathon. Um, just having raced it before, is there anything that you're looking to like, in this year's race where, you know, you're, you're talking about a lot, a lot about like data and metrics and stuff. And whether that's quite literally looking at your watch or just like sensory data of how you feel, is there anything that you're going to look out for while you're out in the course? Like any specific things that you may remember from 2018 that you're going to bring to this year's marathon? Uh, it's, I think it's more of like an awareness. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is like a quote unquote cheater marathon just cause it's like net downhill. Uh, <laughs> but there is is Boston a cheater marathon? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Do that, Scott. <laughs> uh, no, it's 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 super hilly the first half. Mm -hmm. So like the first half marathon, you got to respect it. And uh, for me, it's just getting through that first half marathon and then essentially uh, coasting that that last latter half. So just being very conservative, holding myself back. Uh, and doing what I need to do and not burn myself out too much. Is there such thing as coasting the second half of marathon? When it's that downhill? Yeah, I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I think something that stuck out to me, Brogan, when you first showed up here, I remember being so excited to be your teammate and and having this like swagger of like a true marathon or being a part of the team, especially because at that time, that was where Reed was kind of like dabbling in half marathons, but didn't quite have the balls to step up to a marathon quite yet. He was in chump. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I remember talking to you one of those first days at practice and, you know, be excited to pick your brain about the marathon. And you said, and I'll never forget, you're like, oh no, I never want to run a marathon again. Oh no. <laughs> I, I hate the marathon. Marathon is awful. Yeah. Um, and you were serious. Yeah. Still serious. Yeah. Like that you, if you could, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to run one again. No. Yeah. And I guess talk to me about that. Where does that come from? And then where does that come through where you are facing one yeah. coming up? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a completely different mindset. I'm actually excited about this one. Uh, just cause there is yeah. <laughs> sweet. I know. It's really yeah. good to hear. Yeah. Well, it's a different mindset. You know, if, if you're like, even if you're going out and running a mile, it's like very nerve wracking. Like you're going to go out and just like put yourself through some extreme pain for four minutes. The marathon is just like completely different. Like it's, it's, it just feels easy and you feel like you're going too slow, probably through 16 to 18 miles. If you're doing it right. If you're doing it right. And then the, then your legs just shut down and, uh, it's not really, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's not like while it's happening is not painful. Uh, but after that, I just, it's just, I don't know what it is. It just wrecks me every time. Like I, this is probably too much information, but like, <laughs> uh, like I get body chills, I'm peeing blood and like I'm wrecked for at least 24 hours. And then my body is just wrecked for maybe a week after. And that, and that could be, you know, 
a lack of training properly. Um, but it just truly destroys my body more than anything like I've ever experienced. And, uh, it's just not, after you do it, you're like, I don't want to ever do that again. And how much do you believe that you need to wreck your body in training to properly do a marathon? I know we talked about it a little bit where it's like Helen O'Beary for New York. Like she wrecked her body on Mags mm-hmm. doing that crazy, what, 530? Yeah. 25 miles yeah. at 530. 25 miles at 530 pace at Mags, which is just mind boggling to me. Um do you believe that you have to do that in order to run a marathon to that caliber? Like, do you have to wreck yourself? Uh, I think you can fake it a little bit, but there are courses that you can't fake it. New York definitely being one of them. Um, the, I, I, I will die by this, but like marathon fitness is 10K fitness. And uh, 10K fitness is just general athlete fitness. You just need to be an athlete. Like any race, doesn't matter. Like if you're a good runner, you can run anything. Um, but the marathon is the only difference is you need to have the ability to take that pounding. So, uh, being able to run the super heli course or, uh, putting in the miles, it's, it's just fatigue. Like there's no point during the race that you are going to be tired, uh, like with your cardio, it's just all muscle fatigue. And it's like I said, nothing you've ever experienced before and you can't talk to it until you've experienced it. And, uh, it makes total sense just to like go out and thrash the body. But I think lifting can help, you know, compensate for that as well. So, um, it kind of, yeah, there's, there's many different ways you can get to it, but going out and running 5:30 pace at max is definitely a way to do it. How many marathons do you feel like you need to run in order to feel like you are a marathon veteran? Like, you know how to do this properly. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll ever know how to do it properly, <laughs> but I, I think you got, you, you have a good idea after the first one. It's kind of like, okay, I know what I need to do. And do you think there's a big learning curve from your first one to your second one or second to third, or is there like a plateau point? Yeah. I, where yeah. it's like, dude, just run slower at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I'd say probably the third one, you probably, you it's just a confidence thing. Like when you're training for it, like you go out and do a six mile tempo and you're like, how the heck am I going to do this for 26 miles? That's the yep. thing that always drives me crazy yeah. about the marathon. I can't explain that. Is, yeah. is where like with you and with Reed and Connor, all you guys, you guys will go out and do six by mile yeah. at 4.55 yeah. pace, whatever, five five oh five pace. And it's like, you guys will be like, all right, like I'm feeling pretty confident. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You feel <laughs> confident. Like yeah. there's 20 more miles at this same exact pace without the minute rest that you've been doing. And for me, when I'm training for a 5K, one of my key workouts is, you know, 16 by 400 at that 5K pace. And it's, if I, I know if I can, it translates, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, I'm running more laps than what I will be a little bit faster even than what I will be on that 5K with very short jog rest. That's basically a test that knows, I know exactly if I can hit that workout, if I can run 62s, jogging 60 second rest and having my heart rate, you know, continue to be low enough. I know I'm ready to break 1320, you know, and it's crazy to me that you guys can translate that to a marathon in the same way with like just such lackluster workouts. Oh yeah. Like for lack of a better way to say it. Yeah. I mean, that just goes to like saying that it's just the muscle fatigue. Like if you can have an engine that operates at, you know, 150 beats per minute at five minute pace, like you can hold that for a long time and it's the muscle that breaks down and holds you back. So, uh, it's, uh, it's no different, honestly. Like you just need to build the fitness, like 10 K shape fitness. And then however way you're building the acclimation with like muscles, uh, whether it's lifting or running hilly courses, uh, is what you have to do. So yeah, it, it it never makes sense to me either, but somehow the body is able to do it. So yeah. we could be outliers. That could be true too. <laughs> so I have no idea. Yeah. Basically, Sam's saying you need to do an Ironman to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. to, to prepare for your marathon. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but what, so if, if you don't like the marathon very much, I know you're excited. What is the ideal race distance? race distance for you and uh definitely 10 miles rip i half marathons are great too but 10 miles you can like go out rip and i just seem to be able to hold those paces 
longer than other mm. people over hills and whatnot. Um, but the body doesn't recover as quickly in a half marathon as it does a 10 miler. So if I can run a 10 miler every weekend, that would do it. Yeah. I just love the race. I mean, I, I, it wasn't a 10 miler, but when I ran Falmouth, you know, like it seemed like anywhere from a 30 to 55 minute race is like on a, on the roads is like pretty fun. Oh yeah. Like, it's like a pretty exciting thing. Like I took it out too hard. So it like felt like shit. It hurt really bad halfway through, but like, it's just like a, it's just like a fun time out there, no matter how shitty you're I'm feeling. Yeah. Just you're like, it'll be over with soon. Yeah. Like we still got some time to, yeah, to get it done. You guys gotta get off the track. <laughs> the road is where it's at. It's just <laughs> infinitely better. Like everything about it is better. Like the the people, the community. Get hotels paid. Hotel. Yeah. Travel. <laughs> yeah, like literally you guys, everything paid. You guys are you you're like, hey, what? Where do you guys want to stay in a hotel? You guys want to get an Airbnb? <laughs> Should we gr- rent a car? I'm like just stressed out the whole time. I know. Where are we going to dinner? Yeah. My, exactly. my goal for this track season is to only race at track meets that will pay for everything. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how you guys do it. Road racing is just infinitely better. Yeah. I remember early on in my running, my first year when I moved out to Boulder, I was with. Trevor Dunbar on a run and I looked up to Trevor quite a bit at that time and I asked him I was like hey man like do you have any advice for me as a pro runner and what I should be doing and he was like well do you want to do you want to run fast or do you want to make money and I was like well I want to I want to do both (laughs) you know what and it's a response to everyone and he was like well run short races on the road then if you want to try to do both (laughs) um And I didn't quite understand what he meant until I started doing those track races that first year. And I realized I'm like, okay, that's $200 hotel room, $200 flight, and then $200 for food throughout the whole weekend for those three days, you know, because you're going out to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, most likely. And yeah, it hurts. It adds up really quickly. And there definitely is that case where it's like, yeah, it would be nice to have a race that pays 10 deep, mm-hmm. you know, and even if you have an off day and you're eighth place, you're still breaking even mm-hmm. at least, you know, and if it's a road race, you're walking home with that money in your yeah. pocket because you didn't pay for the flight or the travel because they had 10,000 people behind you racing. And, uh, yeah, one day, maybe yeah. one track we'll fickle bitch <laughs> <laughs> maybe that'll be the title for this uh yeah podcast. uh then they're, then they're probably like well why didn't you do football or basketball <laughs> then you did everything paid for <laughs> well it's my body <laughs> <laughs> I'm well <Uh-oh. laughs> um so i just wanted to like briefly touch on it i think it's an important topic to talk about where when you, you have reached some really low, dark moments in this sport where it was more than acceptable for you to take a step out and for you to say, hey, this is toxic for me. This is toxic for my mental. This is toxic for me to put myself through this. It is toxic for me to run through this much pain um, day in and day out. I know you felt that tenfold uh, more than most people deserve to feel in their professional running careers in those dark moments and I know we just push them down Mm. and we forget about them and right now you're in a great upswing where you are running 90 miles a week how the hell are you still doing this you know I ask myself that question every day Uh, I, I would say running is fun maybe 5 to 10 percent of the time uh, and again, I, I haven't had a quote unquote fun race in probably four years. So it's a hundred percent miss rate for four years. Um, and it is a constant, like, why am I doing this? Uh, and especially when you have pain, like literally every step, um, just like death by a thousand cuts and like your motivation wanes and, um, you know, I thought that a lot of times, like, why am I doing this? And well, I mean, one, what else would I rather be doing? Like if I were to quit and just like watch the best years of my life go by and not try to pursue something, um, that was exactly the lead up until my marathon, uh, 
the 2018 U.S. Marathon National Champion. Uh, you've probably heard of him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so like four to five years, I had terrible training and like I put in the work, like this relentless belief that it was I was going to break through and like I was going to be able to hit that. And uh, there was like this quote, it's like, um, if you like give up, then you'll never know when your next breakthrough is about to give like come out. Um, and I felt that like to the deepest core of myself. Mm. Uh, and you know, I just kept believing, kept believing. And, you know, now I get, I'm a national champion on my resume. I could have quit and I probably would have been none the wiser. Uh, but it's sort of like an ego thing of, you know, I need to prove to myself. I think before it was like, I need to prove to everyone else that I am this good. Uh, now it's like, I just want one. I know we talked about this, like one beautiful race of like, everything went well, training went perfect. And I was like fully capable of like giving everything I got and just like leave it all out there. And that's what I'm chasing right now. While also chasing like this relentless belief that I still have uh that you know national championship caliber person in my body um and you know when you're going through those tough times it's like one year goes by and you're like okay i'm gonna get through this two years go by and you're like okay i'm definitely due and now it's been four years so it's it's like been a very short-term window if you would have told me four years ago that hey you're gonna be injured for the next four years um i sign on the dotted line i know yeah and but at the end of it, yeah, <laughs> what's going to be the outcome? Yeah, but exactly. sign here. Yeah, exactly. I and if and if there was like a positive outcome, I totally one thousand percent would do it. If I know yeah. like five six years of like nothing happened, man, I don't know. I don't know if I could do that all again. Uh, and I have no idea how I got through it. Uh, but again, it's that relentless belief that I'm going to be me again, and I want to be me again, and it's the most exhilarating and liberating feeling in the world to be that person and like I will do anything I can to like experience that one last time and my my clock is ticking you know your peak is 28 to 32 so I've given myself like I have to put in the time at least this time period after anything after that it's like the statistics like say hey you should probably hang it up at this point but until that point, I'm going to give it everything you got. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for listening to the podcast. <laughs> I don't know if I want to keep going after that. Um, yeah, no, that's beautiful. I think that there is so much beauty in that chase, and I don't know if it exists with what you said. I don't know if it exists. The perfect build, the perfect race, you know, that beautiful race you talked about, you know, for any of us. And... I think that that's something where that chase uh, of trying to become and harness that moment when it does come is something like, Joey, have you felt like you've experienced that? A perfect buildup, that perfect race that you consider just a beautiful thing uh, you, that, that meant to you? Maybe not by definition, but I think just like breaking four for the first time really was just like a symphony in my own head during that race of day after like li literally less than 24 hours after PRing in the steeplechase um not being able to break six minute pace on my strides for the warm-up I was like I'm so screwed in this race I won't be able to run 65s and then 58s 59s just felt so easy it was just like the most beautiful race I could have ever run you know I didn't win but just like getting to 1200 and I was like I'm going to do this today and it's beautiful and somebody's going to go around me right now and I'm just going to get on their shoulder. I'm just going to go with them. Like it was perfect clarity. It was, it was incredible. It wasn't the perfect build towards anything. I was getting ready for USA's in the steeplechase, but it, I, I mean, you couldn't have written a better script for how that could have gone for me, you know, just given everything that happened beforehand. Um, so yeah, you know, like your, like your marathon, it was the, the time almost when you expect at least, right? Like where everything just seems to click for whatever reason. So it is, that is definitely like, <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> for those of you listening, uh, the lights just went out here. Because <laughs> not on YouTube. That's going to seem much weirder for our listeners on Spotify and whatnot. But um, it is it is a mystery to me. And I said and I talked about it in the Morgan podcast, so I'm not going to repeat the story. But there is a commonality, and I think most runners do have that story of I felt so bad. Mm -hmm. and somehow everything went right and there's plenty of times where it's exact opposite where you feel great the build-up is great you ran amazing workouts and then 800 meters into the race or maybe for you eight miles into the race you're like where where is yeah. everything i needed to have this day everything i expected to be able to have this day so there definitely is that now famous Des Linden quote where it's like, keep showing up mm -hmm. because you never know if that day is going to be your day or not, unless you give yourself a chance to send it and put yourself in it. So it's definitely something to it. Um, I wanted to talk about, there's been news that have come out recently, very recently. As recently as this morning. <laughs> this morning oh, no. in, our, in our group chat about... Um, that Orlando is not actually set officially to be the Olympic trials marathon destination. I guess USATF, the shit show of an organization that it is, you know, I'm not a part of USATF, so I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> You're not getting any trouble for You're it. You're part of the um, Bundesliga. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out DL file. Um, but uh, with that came the very funny question of let's just hold the event virtually and under an honor system and read in the group chat today had a very funny response to saying put me on a treadmill with the harry potter music uh or audio was that? Movie. the movie yeah <laughs> the audio book which is exactly one hour and 58 minutes <laughs> and i'm gonna take home the gold <laughs> what is it for you if the event if the olympic trials were held virtually brogan where are you doing it and who are you doing it with or what is the setting are you listening to music what's going on oh. to make it your perfect olympic trials marathon honor code 26.2 wherever you want uh i'm going to boston is it the downhill course? <laughs> <laughs> uh no i don't i don't know that's a good question i i think definitely you gotta go with treadmill the lock in the pace and i'd have some jeopardy on or something like that it's like try to answer some riddles or something while I'm trying to do it. Uh, but yeah, tre treadmill definitely makes the most. Would you have people like there cheering you on the whole time, like side by side, or do you want like a dark room? Like what is, what is on the Boston thing? marathon treadmill? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the treadmill, the treadmill because the undulates. Yeah. Um, I think I would want it like dead silent. I like just like total zone lock in and then, maybe last 10k or even like yeah maybe last 10k like everyone comes in everyone comes in yeah everyone comes in music starts blaring like or maybe i just get music or something like that but i like to picture it as you know from the film like from the film rudy where everyone puts their jersey down like as you're running on the last 10k everyone comes in and puts like a singlet down or oh, something yeah. in front of you in the, like right on the treadmill and you're just like Oh, I can make it. It's like your high school coach, your dad. Exactly. You know? People I never would expect. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do it for them. <laughs> yeah, just like one mile each. One mile dedicated to one person. Yeah. I do think that is something that is the coolest thing about marathoning. And I remember my mom asked me to do it. And I was like, Mom, like, what do you, what do you mean? And she asked me, like, hey, what mile, do, what mile do you want before one of her marathons and i was like what do you what, what do you mean i was like i'm dedicating a mile to each person oh funny yeah. you know uh, and i'm gonna think of them during that mile and of course i was like i want mile freaking 23 yeah you know yeah. like i want you in the hurt longer <laughs> you know like thinking about yeah your beloved son <laughs> <laughs> he didn't clean his his bedroom with <laughs> she's just <Yeah>! pissed. <laughs> <laughs> what about you joey if hypothetically speaking, Olympic trials, marathon, wherever you want, whoever with, what's the situation you're putting yourself in? I am convinced this is a bit niche and only the kids from Northern California will understand this. And maybe some kids from Portland, some Rancho Cucamongo kids. 
That's Southern California, that's, please. That's just like the only school I know. I those aren't those aren't real <laughs> runners, please. <laughs> those kids are better. Oh, than... shots fired at Rancho. This most <laughs> this... <laughs> shout out Rancho. <laughs> the Southern California high school runners are better than pro runners. I'll say it right now. <laughs> However, I'm running my marathon at Crystal Springs Cross Country Course in Belmont, California. It is my home high, home high school cross country course. It is 2.95 miles around. It is hilly as shit, and I will never lose on that course <laughs> as long as I live. Uh, with anybody? Just by yourself? Just by myself, yeah. You listening to anything? Big Booty Mix Volume 11, <laughs> and then Big Booty Mix Volume 15, two hours <laughs> on the money. <laughs> <laughs> nice, that is a good one. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with the... You know, I'm going to go with an actual realistic one because this is a virtual marathon and you actually need to run fast, unlike Joey. That's going to ask you. Yeah, I'm going to destroy it four hours. hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to quit after the second lap. It's like, Joey, you got last place because everyone else chose a flat downhill course on this virtual marathon. I've only gone 5K on this before. <laughs> it's not even a full 5K. It's 2.95 miles. No wonder you guys run fast. Yeah, yeah. cheaters. <laughs> it was 5K. <laughs> um... I'm going to go with the American Tobacco Trail, uh, a place where we did a lot of basically all our tempo runs in college. It's just a perfect trail straight through. Put a nice picture up right here on our YouTube um, for those watching on YouTube. And I'm probably, man, I definitely, it's interesting that you guys both said by yourself in some way, whether it's on a treadmill or that, like I would go nuts. Like I need, I would want as many people. I want flying the Elliot Kipchoge with like the seven. I want freaking uh, just an absolute star studded lineup. Like, I want the Nike lineup. Oh, like, I want Stewie Mac. I want Jakob there. I want just everyone who I'm looking at and be like, oh, yeah, I need to like lean forward more, like a really good cadence. Like, I want Mocketeer coming in on my shoulder. Like, I want Luis Gravalva coming in for a mile. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to get my cadence like, like his, you know? So. I'm trying to emulate every person I'm around throughout that, like coming in and out and just fire me up. And then, yeah, definitely would want my mom and Morgan like yelling at me so I can just hear them. Like, I don't want anyone else cheering for me, but I want to be able to hear. I guess I'll throw Joan in there too. I should give coach the nod too, where I want them uh, to be cheered for me. Jeez, anything and else? Uh, <laughs> Joey and I. Yeah, and Joey and I. Family, <laughs> family, I a hand off from Rogan. <laughs> I want the CEO of uh, Pillar to be handing me my supplements as I'm running through the whole thing. <laughs> what is your fueling? Like, what uh, is your favorite, like, gels? I'm, like, I'm using like scratch right now. Scratch? Yeah. That seems to me. That's what you use in CIM? Yeah. What about for gels? No gels. It's just all fuel within the water. Oh, really? Yeah. I tried gels before, and it just... Do most elite marathoners don't use gels? Yeah. I would say hydration? Yeah. I would say so. Interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just much easier. I think there's a few that use gels just because yeah. it maybe goes down easier. But yeah, no, I I used gels uh, at, at CIM last time, and it's to each their own. I think they're they're both just as good, but um, I'm, I'm gonna try just the. It's just much easier just to use fluids rather than trying to look eat something up. fluid. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. yeah, just too much. How much dress? And once again, this is back to the track and road debate. And one thing where the track gets the tilt is that if we fuck up, we can race the, the race again next weekend somewhere else. If you fuck up a marathon, you don't get to take another swing the next weekend. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. And where does that... <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> And, but that's, but that's is where this question is. And this, this question is stress inducing because you do have it coming up where it is like, how, how do you cope with that? How do you cope with knowing that your six months of buildup is for this one thing? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's why the, another thing, why the marathon sucks so much is that like I could get sick like the week before and there's, there's no take backs, no redos. Um, I could get, I could eat the wrong thing and get an upset, upset stomach. It's like, there's absolutely nothing you can do. And for me, it's do or die. Like there's not another marathon a week later that I can run. It's, this is it. And, uh, I have to be all in on this and there's so many variables within the marathon that you can't control. Um, you can have an inkling in it. Uh, but yeah, that's just, I have to be very, very smart, like two weeks out, not to do anything stupid. I mean, even four weeks out, like 
not training too hard or just full bubble boy. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't be anywhere near yeah. anybody. Like I can get sick right now and it'd be fine. I tested positive for COVID. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got my booster. Yeah. You're fine. You're trying to make out with me again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's just kind of how the marathon works and you just got to embrace it. You want to do the workouts? You want to do bits? Yeah. Bits time? Let's, let's, all right, we're going to wrap gonna, up with some bits. We're going to do some bits now that we've gone past all that boring, serious yeah, stuff. Finally. Um, <laughs> All right. Uh, we talked about this with Antonio last week, correct? But there's a famous workout that you did that mm-hmm. we asked you about. 114 by 100 meter hill repeats mm-hmm. with jog down recovery. How long did that take you to do? Oh, I'm sure it was two plus hours. And wait, before we go any further into this bit, can you just quickly tell us the story of how that came about? Like, like you must have been off your rocker. Oh, I definitely was. I, I was psychopathic at that time, but uh so what actually happened uh so there are kind of two things that go into this so my next door neighbor he was a professional kicker for the miami dolphins and uh he was like nice flex yeah (laughs) he was like if you want to be good at running like everybody ran hills just do hill sprints like they'd put weights on their back and just rot this hill um and so i eventually did like 25 hill sprints like that summer and then eventually uh this uh guy this coach reached out and he kind of expanded on that a little bit uh ben tillis shout out to ben tillis uh back in iowa um he like started at me at like maybe 40 hill repeats so we definitely sorry how old are you when you did this workout? senior year so junior year of high school yeah junior year of high school i was doing i went to this like uh tubing hill this winter tubing hill i'd run on grass and i would just do this like 100 meter hill sprint but then senior year leading yeah senior year leading into senior year uh i did i started at 40 hill repeats and i think we got up to 70 by the end of the year (laughs) and i i just like just you or that was your whole team uh every now and then some guys would hop in but no nobody would do anywhere near what this is a whole new method this is the iowa method there's the norwegian method of double threshold training and the iowa method is just how many hill sprints can you fucking do? Oh yeah, no, we went off. Like I, like I, exp- like I got way better, infinitely better. So like I got addicted. I was like, hills are the way. Yeah. And uh, every year I would just do a little bit more, a little bit more, and yeah, I got up to 114. And my hips weren't working, my knees hurt, and it was just a dumb idea. <laughs> and uh, my brother and his team did it in high school too. They probably got up to 70 hills. But they were state champions, like sophomore years through senior year, and they their team won cross country. So, like, there's a lot to that, uh, and it's the speed thing. It's just like a, sure. a like like you can do strides and yeah. probably do ten of them and probably be fine. Uh, but I was yeah, I was doing 114 of them. Whenever I heard that story, and I've heard it so many times that you've done that workout, but I never knew the backstory of the workout from what you just said. I always just pictured it as you just having like a very bad day, a oh, really bad day. Oh, I just needed to like feel something. And it was like dark, like middle of the night, raining, and you just go up and down. That's what I imagined. hundred percent. No, it definitely was. And I remember the, the day that it was 114. I, uh, I was in college at that time, but I think I worked. Uh, and then I had- Where, What do you mean you worked? I think I was working at a bike shop. Okay. Uh, and it was the winter for, for whatever reason. Um, but I remember Did you have the ski mask on. I had the ski mask. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, it was freezing out, and I remember uh, my neighbor or my friend's parents lived in the neighborhood where I was doing the hill hill strides, and they they left, went to dinner, uh, and then came back, and I was still running hill hill strides, and it was pitch black. I was out there by myself, and they're like, "Dude, you gotta stop." <laughs> like, I got forty more, I, Nancy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to a, a hundred. Were you like? What were you like? Okay, fourteen more, or what was the breaking point? Because uh, I would assume it would be like, hey, get to hundred. That's going to be a sick story. No, nah, I was just every week. I would just build up a little bit more, and so you had done ninety the week before, or something. Then probably a hundred, and I've usually increased by increments of eight. Okay, so, so 
<laughs> this wasn't even just an anomaly. No, no, yeah. Is oh 114 divisible by eight is now the real question. Yeah, yeah. Let me see you. Um, yeah, I don't think it is. I don't know how, <laughs> I, don't know how I got the 114, but yeah, it was like 896. Now Noah's gonna leave you. Yeah, yeah. 112. <laughs> so maybe it was 112. Oh, I have two shot. You just a. Hey, I, you gotta have a pass. Like I miscount when I have like 10 by K. Yeah. So <laughs> I just cast for 114 yeah. by a hundred. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I was psychopathic. All right. Anyways, here's the bit. The bit is, uh, I asked some people on our team and we also pulled some workouts from Strava. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a workout. It's a really good workout or somebody's best workout they've ever done or one that they could think of. And you have to guess who ran the workout. Again, some people on the team, some people not on the team, but I'm sure you'll be able to guess at least a couple. Let's start with an easy one. I'll throw you a softball here. 23 miles, 503 average, last mile 436. Out in the roads. 23 miles. That sounds... That's... Uh, American Marathon. I was going to guess Cam Lemons, but... Uh, what's... 437 last marathon? Or last mile? Uh, that's got to be Connor Mance. No. C.J. Albertson. Oh, yeah. He did it like a month ago. Or right. was that? Is that just in the park? It was just in the Fresno. Yeah, yeah and he does that all the time. Yeah, I should have known that one. <laughs> all right, here we go. Next workout. On the track, three sets of mile 600, 300, off of 400 jog, um, five minutes between sets. Miles were 421 down to 416. 600s, 132 to 130. And then four or the, was it 300s? 300s were... Um, like 44, 45. Hmm. 43 to 45, actually. 420 to 416? Hmm. Well, you'd do something psychopathic, so I don't think that would be you. Uh, I'm going to guess that's you. No, it was Sam. No, that was you. <laughs> that was you. No, I did I ran faster. I, I did I ran 410. You did not run 410 on the last rep. Did you, you met this year. Because you asked this year in St. Moritz. When I asked you, I was not in, with you in St. Moritz this year. That's right. We did it the year before. We did it last year, yeah. What did we do? We did I, literally what I was just that, said. Was that the workout we, we did? Yeah. So you did it. So, it's together. so I have done that. Ah, so yeah, I was right. Well, now I can't use my fun workout then. <laughs> <I didn't. laughs> All right, here we go. Next one. On grass, cross-country workout. 12 by K, 255 to 253 off of 60 seconds rest. Cross country guy, 255 to 253. American. Yeah. Are they on our team? No. Oh, this this was Connor Mance. Yeah, that's a Connor Mance workout. Yeah. Did it literally this week. I yeah. I love Connor Mance's workout so much so because much. it goes back to like what you said about just being a good 10K runner is all you need to be a good marathon runner. Yeah. And that's just what Connor Mance yeah. is. Like he's just a badass 10K runner that can just do whatever the hell he wants because he's that good at a 10K. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right, next one. Seven by mile. I'll give I'll give you a hint. At Celestial, averaging 439. Uh, read. Yeah, that's a read one. Yeah. That's a good job, good job. All right. Um, here we go. Eight by 600 off 90 seconds rest, averaging 131. Eight by 600. Did I say that? Uh, Drew. Yeah, that's a Drew workout. Drew and Sam did that one. What was it? Eight by 600. Off of 90 seconds rest, 131 average. All right. Here we go. Five sets of 800 at 5K, straight in the 300 at mile, off of 400 jog, 210, 45 average. So you run 800 at 210 and then straight into a 45. 420s. That's a 1330. It's an 1100 meter rep. Someone on the team? Mm-hmm. Dang. Well, I think... Are are we... Are you, there's no repeats, are there? Are you, are you saying a workout that you did? Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, it is a workout I did. <laughs> Almost stumped, yeah. That was the best workout of my life, and I was so... I, I couldn't break four off of that. <laughs> I did that back in 2019 with Drew, technically. Yeah. All right, last one, last one. Four by four sets of one K, six hundred, four hundred. The Ks are two thirty eight to two thirty three. Six hundreds are one thirty two to one twenty eight. Four hundreds are sixty down to fifty seven. Somebody in Boulder. I'll give you that hit. I was gonna say this is someone. This is someone's past. Uh, this is 
this has got to be Joe Clicker. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Yes. Nailed it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And that's the end of that bit. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you want him funny how it exclaims like somebody? <laughs> really? It is It is funny how people's like DNA are with their what they're working on. Yeah. That is, and I love that about so many of those workouts. I really wanted to throw in like Cam Levin's famous workout where he, that's on flow track where it's like, okay, you attempted to do K's at 250 pace. And then came back the next day and tried to <laughs> it was a bit too cold. It was a bit too cold. And then you spiked up rep one again to what was it like two forty six or something? So and foot starts bleeding. Crazy guy. Yeah, that's all time. That is a wrap, guys. Thank you so much, Brogan, for the time. Thank you for all the insight. Mm-hmm. Really enjoyed this. Thank you for all our listeners. If you are still listening, you are a real one. Uh please Leave us a review, any feedback, comments, subscriptions mean so much to us. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we look forward to being back next week. CIM December 3rd. December 3rd. Tune in. Brogan Austin is back with a vengeance. Woohoo. Right. Was that close to the sound that uh, the music? <laughs> Before. Is that right? 15 minutes? That had to be our worst podcast yet, right? Yeah. <laughs>